Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and a delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. This is Shekinah, an encounter with God's love, power, and wisdom. And you are about to listen to Apostle Philip Cephas of Shekinah Network International. Stay tuned, because your life will be transformed by the words that you will hear. The Lord is saying, after tonight's ministration, your ministry is entering another cadre in the spirit. Your ministry is entering another cadre in the spirit. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Can you receive to the microphone with me, Apostle Philip Cephas, to the microphone. Hallelujah. 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 Um, how many of you are excited to be here? If you are excited to be in this place, give the Lord a shout. Um, well, I trust God that this evening God is going to help us strengthen us grant unto us the privilege of grace to do business in deeper waters. Whether we like it or not, because we bear the body of mortality, we are weak. The level of disadvantage that lies in being a human being is enormous. And anytime you see a man boast, it's because he doesn't know what spirit can do. The biggest of all mortal men are weak. A demon that is just unleashed today can bring the best of a mortal man. And that is why the strength of mortality is weak. And this is the reason why a man can be shouting, I'm the head of the home until his two year old joint secret society. I'm part of the normal escapade they do daily is to test the power that is given to them daily. She just decided to go out for a party car. And she looked upon the father that shout too much. Ram the head. She may lift up her hands and as she bring it down, the father is there. And he will now realize that the strength of the flesh does not have ability to wield any power. And anyone that does business with God understands God as a spirit. If you embrace God, as a being that you cannot associate with him, relate with him, and take an advantage from him, you will be weak, although you will carry the name of a Christian. And only those that understand God as a spirit have done business with God in deeper waters. And this is the reason why people fail in life. Not because of anything, not because they are not good. They have neglected the aspect of spirit enablement. And this is the reason why Anytime you want to empower a normal man to become a supernatural man, you introduce another component of the spirit. Can we pray one minute? And just ask God to help us. And if God intends to help a man, he introduce himself as a spirit to that man. And this is the reason why the encounters are made possible. This is the reason why visitations are made possible. This is the reason why you pray so that you can engage a realm beyond time. So that you can take advantage of what men cannot see, what men cannot hear. And it doesn't matter how weak you are, if you can take advantage of that, you will not realize that strength that no man knows. And that is the strength of the eagle. He knows that it's possible for the both the mighty men to be broken. And only those that are gifted with strength can survive. I'm not going to be 
God does more beyond preparing you for a sermon. The presence of God is all you need. The presence of God is not what you do to prepare you for something. No. The presence of God is the security and the strength of a believer. What you call a sermon, what you call a revelation is what is better out from the presence. Any man that does not know how to torture the presence of God will be a man that is deprived of revelation and light. What you call prophecy comes from the presence of God it was demanded for a prophet to prophesy and he said bring unto me a minstrel and why she minister out of the hour of the presence come the speakings of God what you call the word of God was actually what God uttered because his presence was there and this is the reason why whether as a minister it doesn't really matter whatsoever capacity so long as you stand to administer God unto people you must understand how to usher in the presence People don't care to know your English. People don't care to know how well you quote the scriptures. They care to know the energy that comes from the presence. This is the reason why I always say ministration has switch. It has switch to spirit administration. And if you cannot administer spirit and life unto people, you wasted their time. Jesus Christ speaking said, The word I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. They have the ability to give life. It takes a lot to wash out God in a religion. It takes so much. God does not just come because we gather in our numbers. No. God does not just come because we put a good title and we write Jesus. No. Something can carry the name of Jesus and it can still be canon. There is nothing special about it. What makes it special is the presence of God. The aura of his presence is the symbol of his name. Say, take off your food from here, not because Jesus came, but because there is a presence, and suddenly the place became a holy ground. Heaven is heaven because the tabernacle of the presence of God dwells. Like. Heaven is not heaven just because the name heaven is there. No, if God shifts his location anywhere he appears, it becomes heaven. Here is heaven. Why? Because the Lord is here. The reason why we are deprived of life. It's because heaven has not been a reality where we are. And if God cannot come in your room, even if you gather one million of us, we'll give you a microphone, God cannot come. God does not come because you had a microphone. He came because you know the protocol of the presence. You know how to host it. A lady possessed of demons does not need a special service. She can manifest any time. You are possessed of God. Do you need so much jamboree to reveal it? No. It's a natural overflow. But a man that doesn't know how to host those spirits, sometimes the spirit will leave. It is possible not just only to cast out the demons, you can cast out the Holy Ghost out of a man's life. It's possible for the Holy Ghost to be there and yet again it's inactive. There 
spirit you must learn how to host it the anointing is a protocol of the spirit and until the spirit give you energy the energizing power to administer him you will fail there is a dynamics that work with the anointing the bible is speaking in the book of Acts that they say how god anointed jesus christ of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power it then means that the anointing can never be dynamically operated except the holy ghost is in you if you see any man anointed without the holy ghost that's a challenge because the devil also has an anointing if you see any man operating power without the holy ghost you must know that there are also realms of power without the spirit the goal is not the power no the goal is the holy ghost how god anointed jesus christ with the holy ghost then powerful no one that they gathered together in one accord and while they were together the presence of god came when he descended then we saw that in fully when you see god in a man's life it's not because he liked the man it's just because the man has learned how to trap a dimension called emmanuel god with us the omnipotency of god the omnisciences of god all of these dimensions of god that cannot be limited is what you can trap by the spirit and if you don't know how to operate god dynamically you will be so weak on the earth it doesn't really matter whatever your name is when you see us cry you see us weep it's because we know something about the presence the man said take us something from here if your presence go into with us you know an angel can go you know many things can go but he wanted the presence because he know that god cannot send his presence without himself anywhere you see the presence of god know that god is there like i told you it has nothing to do with a football club it has nothing to do with a party hall they can use this place for party after we are done the presence of god will not be there but so long as some of us come we are too possessed that god must be revealed i don't know the kind of god that you know so much that you cannot reveal him it's a challenge how can you know god and your friend has been your friend for five years and he has never once upon a time catch you that you are override that one day you enter overdrive and you don't know why one day you are just in your room and you are crying why are you crying say god is here the person cannot understand i know a woman that she will just sit down in a room and begin to cry and the husband will say i found a friend and he said no he said something wrong with you she said i don't know what the man does not understand is the dynamics of the spirit she's having a burden that cannot be defined in time how much more have you shared with the holy spirit and this is the reason why you cannot defeat the battles to you why because when he looks at you you cannot be able to host him and jesus christ being said that things i want to tell you that you cannot be able to bear them why because the holy ghost is not available the advantage of a new believer is not that he's a christian the advantage is that the holy ghost dwell it because mankind are laden with all kinds of infirmity you can never have a better mentor than jesus christ but after he was done mentoring them they perceived it they needed the holy spirit to tabernacle that means they were with jesus christ yet again they were not anointed until when the holy ghost came the anointing was introduced and immediately when the anointing was introduced they were willing to stand and to represent the anointing of god is attracted to the presence of god and anytime you see the presence of god it means that god is there so one of the greatest thing you have to do is to ensure that the presence of god is everywhere you go everywhere many years ago the lord told me that it's possible for his manifested presence to be with a man it's possible you know there are so many dimensions of the presence of god so many many of them are in the outer court some are in the inner court there is only one dimension of the presence of god in the holy of holies the shekinah that one that is so visible not that a cloud came here not that i am feeling something you know you are feeling god we don't feel it it's too visible we know if you have to wait by your feeling there are many times you know you are not anointed because many more times you will not feel anointed and the days you will raise the dead you may not feel anointed but you will know you are anointed when you enter into the inner court and you turn into the holies of holies you don't feel again you just see light become natural darkness dwell in the outer court in the inner court you may see some level of brightness but it's not enough because the seven candle lampstand is limited it's a menorah you have to come and be renewing the oil there but by the time you enter into the holies of holies the shakaina in tabernacle god himself is there in that place you don't tell anybody see because everybody see 
in that place you don't need a prophet because everybody can prophesy everything is made plain but not everybody join into the inner court not everybody join into the holies of holies the more you go deeper with god the more you stand alone because men become hindrances men become weights that beset you Bible speaking about the inner court and the holies of holies so the inner court the five shops of Aaron can go there but the holies of holies only have the high priest and the reason for the high priest is because the path is too narrow it's too narrow that men will have to die then they are given another life to survive with it you can't carry too many things and go there many of you are not willing for God to put you you are not willing for God to purify you you are not willing for God to sanctify you and that's the reason why there are many things you cannot be able to host and contain so you carry God for two days you lick him out you backslide for one week then you wake up again you backslide again you wake up again needing revival every day and that's why I say we may not need revival service we can remain revived the goal is not to be revived daily the goal is to remain alive why did Jesus Christ die? please have your seat sometimes you come with so much burden and you don't even know how to speak when i look at you i look at the hope of the nation when i look at you i look at a recovery system because if we cannot find you and i in this generation god will be handicapped i know you have been told that god is powerful i agree but the potency of the powerful of god is to be true man has anybody seen God walk on the earth before? No. The last time he came was through Jesus Christ. He will never come again to show us anything again. Everything that God do upon the face of the earth right now, he does it through men. And those people are not more important than you. They don't have five heads. They don't have two heads. They are the same kind of scarosis as you have. But they are yielded to God more than you by a certain degree. Everyone that you see today that represents God has a certain level of yieldedness. Has a certain level of brokenness and contriteness that normal men do not have. There is a certain level of concentration that has given them the privilege to go beyond the veil and everyone remain within the veil. The Bible said to you today, when Moses is read, is read, people see by the veil. Only those that the veil can be parted can be able to see beyond. And that is why anytime we come before the presence of God, we are looking for a way for the veil to be parted. When the veil is parted, you will discover our bishops. There are more APC bishops than the ones that we have seen. Many of our bishops have not gone beyond the veils. And that is the reason why God has been alien in our society. Everyone in the time past, most of the Sadducees, most of the Pharisees have not seen beyond the veil. They have lied to people that the Ark of the Covenant is there, that God comes daily. And everything they spoke was a lie. The house of God has become the house of merchandise. They buy and sell and their pocket is large. And yet again, God is not capturing the heart of man. And that is the reason why men come into the house of God and go back the same. And Jesus Christ came with an anchor. He began to become angry. That is why they cannot do anything because you know he speaks the truth. He said, don't you know that it is not written in your law that my father house is supposed to be the house of prayer. Why? So that the lives of men can be revealed. God proportionally, he locked the life of men and hide their destiny so that even the devil cannot be able to discern. And that is why it's possible for a man to work for 30 years and live as a common man. The devil may borrow him and the devil cannot kill him. The reason why the devil cannot kill the man is not because the devil don't want to kill him. The devil wants to kill him but the destiny of the man is preserving him. And when God looks upon the destiny of a man, it doesn't matter how long you have gone as a harlot, how long you have gone as a prostitute. When God looks upon your destiny, he preserves it. Then he hides it and ensures that this treasure is hidden in water vessel. And by the time a man subscribes to an place for a prayer, what happened is this a man become unlocked like a package that has been seen traveling many kilometers from another country to another country yet again it was not revealed when he came into the hand of the person that was appointed for him to to be revealed there are so many things that concern to your life that concern to your destiny that can never be able to come out why because you still dwell in the outer court and all the things you see about god is in the veil that can never be deciphered moses lived all his life as a stammerer he lived all his life getting afraid until the spirit came upon him according to scripture what made moses stand and speak was because there was a spirit that was upon him and when that spirit came upon seventeen elders, they cannot be able to comprehend those were elders 
Yet again, a spirit that was upon a man that can make him become normal rested upon them and they cannot stop prophesying. How comes only one man containing and his day? Say capacity. You must be able to understand that the anointing is in diverse measures. It is possible for you to have 10 measures. It's possible for you to have 30 measures. It's possible for you to have 100 measures. The Bible speaks about faith. It's the same faith that you have that you should be able to have. But it is in different measure. It then means that the result we produce upon the face of the earth and how much more we can align to the process of God and communicate depends upon our capacity. And it doesn't really matter whether you are Archbishop, Senior Bishop, Big Bishop. It doesn't really matter the title. So long as you don't have capacity, you are a small bishop. Because a small man is a small man indeed. According to the audacity of the kingdom of God, you can only give expression to that which you can be able to contain. It is the same way that you must be able to understand you cannot wear oversize. Everybody wear what is his own size. It's the same thing in the realm of the spirit. Everybody has sizes. We are not the same. We are different. We are in sizes. And if you don't understand this, you will look and you will live upon your life as an endangered for sheep. And this is the reason why oftentimes men die like men men. You must understand that as much as demonic spirits are real, the power of God is not real. But as much as the power of God is not real, it's not committed to normal men. The level of your depth in concentration determines how much more a power can be committed to you. And this is the reason why a lady that joins the society will find a way to upgrade herself because they know there are better realms in the team. There's a realm you need to be in the car to cause the accident. There's a realm you will degree from your house. The accident can happen. But there's a realm that if you just wish I let us ask for today, it will happen. The same way there are realms in this. When a man begins to contend for different realms, he comes to a point where he becomes a man under authority. That he can be able to speak a thing that will be established. Why do we pray so much and nothing happen? Capacity. And the reason why we don't have capacity is because we have not decided to yield to the concentration that we are on that level of capacity because God cannot commit to you more than you can commit to him. If you want God to commit to you, you must commit to him. How much more committed are you towards God? It will determine how much more you commit to you. A man says, if you want all of God, you must give him all of you because it's proportional. And that is why it seems as though men that represent God more are men that die the more. As the woman said, I want to represent Jesus. And she realized that carrying a husband means 50%. And she came to a point when she is married. When they are going for honeymoon, she decided to leave the man. She said, I want 100% of God. And by the time you have 100%, the next one is an overflow. And many of us, God show you visions. He show you dreams. He gives you encounter. But do you know that everything that God will give to you, there is a price to pay? There is nothing free. Everything has a price. And if you can't pay the price, stay away from it. Look for what is free. You want to do deeper things with God. What are you willing to commit unto God? The Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about? Everybody wants to go about being good. But you forget the story of how. Because there was a point in time when he was a normal Nazarene. And how it was a question that amazed people. This was a normal capital. So we bought share from him. We even bought some wood from him. But how? So everybody was mad. It was a price. How? God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. Because normally he was not having Holy Ghost. He wasn't having power. But how? How God anointed a maker. How God anointed Beatles. How God anointed blessing. Suddenly, they saw that there was something in you that they didn't see before. But that thing that they saw in you was what energized you to begin to do good. It then means that it is possible for your life to live the way it is. Everybody look at you and say, get out of here. You are useless. And how? How? And suddenly you will come back again with another kind of strength. With another kind of dexterity. And people that look upon you and insult you and despise you. Now show something that compels them. And my cousin is an evidence that God committed himself to a man. Anytime you see power, it means his spirit was committed. There has never been a man that has real power up the face of the earth that has not trafficked into the realm of the spirit, whether demonic or whether divine. And there has never been a man that has succeeded and excelled in this life that has not trafficked the same into those realms of operation. I know I do not pray as one of the key, but do you know giving? I'm not talking about giving your money, giving your life. The least you can ever give in this kingdom is your money. The least. 
the least God can ever ask you is your money. The hardest is your life. In fact, according to scripture, if you have not offered yourself as a living sacrifice, every other giving is wrong because it doesn't amount to anything. There are people that have been given in the house of God and they have not done the number one plan already. They have not given their heart, given their life. They are in the house of God yet again. They are also in the house of the devil. When you have given your life to God, you cannot take it again. You begin to walk in obedience, requiring what do you ought to do. Then when God wake you at night and he says, I want you to stay awake at night for the next one week, never to sleep again. You don't need to argue. You don't need to bribe God with money because he doesn't need your money. You don't need to tell God, I will do it next tomorrow. No, you want it now because he's your Lord. Suddenly you have a boy. The boy likes you so much. In fact, sometimes you feel as though you love the boy more than your mother. And the Lord come and say, give that boy. The boy may not be a bad boy, but God says, just let him go. Why? Because God is trying to read the heart of you. Because he is your only lover. And until he loves you so much, he can't commit so much to you. Everything you see that God gives to men is not because they pray. That's why there are so many prayer warriors that don't believe in God. It be, they have come to a point where they have not beyond themselves. And when a man loves God beyond himself, he commits so much to him. The Bible said, Eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither have he come into the heart of men. The things that God has a portion and destined for those that love him. The least that God gives to men that love them is the anointing. When you see God help a man, it's because the man was so helpless and God came upon him. The anointing is attracted to brokenness. The anointing is attracted to helplessness. The anointing is attracted to cognitiveness. When you are contrite, broken in spirit, when you have come to the end of yourself, when everything in your life failed, when you are so disqualified, a society look at you and say you are not qualified. Who are you to become this? Suddenly the Lord comes and shows that one with me is maturity. There is something that God does to men that are ordinary, men that are normal, men that are stamina, men that are crippled, men that are discontented, men that are failures. The Bible said there was a nature of men that gathered before David that he gave color to love. David himself was not a man that was qualified. How can you be the last man in your family? And as the last one, you are the one that is sent to the bush. Every last one wear the coat of many colors. And because Joseph refused to go to the bush, his brother sent him to the bush. There's a process to everyone. It doesn't matter how much your father loves you. The father, your father doesn't want you to suffer. One day, your brother will send you as a slave. Because there's a process that will run greatness. Out of the mare, out of the ashes of your dying, is what brought out the anointing and the greatness. I have never seen a great man without a story. I have never seen an anointed man without a story. Every story of greatness without... Every greatness that does not have a story is a scam. Everyone that told you don't have it like that is a scam. We don't blow, we go. And in the process of going, there must be a story. That story will be so discouraged. That story will be so tiring. You must come to the end of yourself several times. Jesus Christ carried the cross and he fell. Somebody helped him. A time came and said, oh God, I don't know. Is it your will or is it my will? I don't understand about this. Nobody marched just like that to God got her. Everybody paid price to resurrect. I can't tell you that there will not be pain. I cannot tell you there will not be hunger. I can't tell you there will not be suffering, but they will not kill you. He's bringing that man out of you. There has never been a wine without threshing. If you want to make juice, you must thresh. If you want to make wine, you must thresh. The anointing comes when you are thresh, when you are broken, when you are discontented, when you are pressed, and when they press you, as they squeeze you, that ointment that is coming out is what is called the anointing. God will have to squeeze you. You will pray, you will fast, you will study, you will cry, you will obey, you will give. It will look as though your life is a failure. But what is happening is that they are squeezing you. They are breaking you. As they are breaking you out of the ashes of the dying. In glory is better. The Bible says Jesus Christ learned to beat them by the things he suffered. I don't know how many years he was suffering, but I know he suffered. Paul speaking say, I do not want you to be in your heart. How that we are pressed beyond measure. But all these things come upon us. But we speak to you to let you know that all these things happen so that we don't trust in ourselves. But we trust in a God that can raise the better. I have nothing to lose, everything to gain. If I die today, I don't lose again. I have been gaining for a long time ago. Jesus Christ speaking say, will say, I give his life for my sake. Eh? He will receive it again. But will say, I keep it, we lose it. How God. 
I don't care where you come from. I don't care who is your father. I don't care who is your mother. I don't care. All I care is that can you submit to the protocol of an encounter? Can you submit to the protocol of the anointing? There is something that God does to normal men that makes them strong men. It doesn't matter how you are disqualified. Oh my God. There are people that they have cast them away from their house. They say, go and perish. Today they become the breadwinner of the family. How God anointed. Many of us we are looked upon as pastors. We are looked upon as vagabonds. Our parents look upon us and they say, Kai, you are the black sheep of the family. You are the smoker. You are the drunkard until how God. How God anointed for himself us. With the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing all good. And there is nothing the devil can do because how God. The devil did not help me. He cannot destroy me. Who God help is who God destroy. But so long as I receive the help of God, you cannot be down. You have been listening to Apostle Philip Seffert of Shekinah Network International, sent with a mandate to raise believers built up in prayer and tenacious faith. You can get our messages at www.philipseffers.com and you can follow us online via our Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and Twitter all at Shekinah Network International. Remember, God loves you.